Today, let's talk about Alphonse Mouka. And to do so, we will meet a real-life mermaid and you will witness how I failed big time in this project before picking myself up. Let's go! Hi guys! Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and all the 7 step painting series and share your work on social media with the hashtag MGFCPaint so I can see it. Just like this uh, wonderful Klimt inspired cat portrait by Lani Marie Paint, who is now becoming a regular on this channel. I love it. This is perfect. Very nice. Now, let's talk about Alphonse Mouka. Alphonse Maria Mouka was born in 1860 in Czechoslovakia, which was then part of the Austrian Empire. Interested in music, religion and painting, he became a scenery painter for a theatre in Vienna by the time he was 20 and made himself a name for mythological and historic epic painting. When he moved to Paris, about 1890, he continued studying the female figure and took many illustration jobs to pay the bills. His muted palette, his precision in the representation of dreamlike women and his dexterity for floral patterns gained him to be pigeonholed in the Art Nouveau community, although he was very frustrated by this label. He used to say, what is Art Nouveau? Art can never be new. But he left a very prolific legacy of posters, advertisements and illustrations. In the mid-1910, he was still not really appreciated by the Times critics, who considered his art as outdated. He went back to Czechoslovakia and uh, focused on the Slav epic, the work of his life, 20 canvases representing the history and myth of his native country, but were unfortunately only exhibited twice before being rolled up for 25 years. His involvement in the Czech nationalist movement and Freemasonry made him a prime target when Hitler's troop invaded Prague in 1938. Mucha was arrested, tortured and passed away shortly after this sad episode. If we want to recreate a painting in Mucha's style, we therefore need a very muted palette, no showy or bright colors, we need to place geometric pattern woven into our realistic portrait and we need a mythical model, a woman who came straight out of legends and exudes magic and fantasy. And I just happen to know such a beautiful mythical creature. We have in Singapore a princess of the ocean, my friend Sirena the mermaid. Hey Cara! How are you? Oh, good. So nice to see you again. Same here. <laughs> My so, favorite Jedi. Sorry? My favorite Jedi. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not today, though. No. <laughs> and, and I have a few questions for you because, in fact, you are my favorite mermaid. Aww. So. I'm, your, I'm the only mermaid you know. True, also, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> so, Kara, we've been costuming together for uh, quite a few years already, and, and we know each other pretty well. I know you are uh, Singapore's first mermaid. Mm -hmm. How did you get uh, into that world? How, how did it happen? Yeah, I feel like you of all people would understand like the power that slipping into a costume brings to people. When I mean, you can escape into that reality of becoming someone more powerful, more mystical, more beautiful. <laughs> right? Do you feel yeah. all those things? Beautiful, not for <laughs> me, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was the way that I first felt when I put on a mermaid tail, which was in university. Okay. And at that time, I just did it as a hobby because, you know, I loved swimming, I liked singing, I loved like the lore of being a mermaid. And um, I kind of started doing parties here and there and uh, just did it in a very small way, just out of passion. But it kind of snowballed and it grew to the point that when I graduated... You have a mermaid school now. You, you teach uh, little girl how to be mermaid and uh, little and boys girls, also. And, and big, big girls also how to be a mermaid. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to include you in a project about Art Nouveau. Do you know about Alphonse Mouka? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> I asked you to prepare some pictures in advance that I could use as reference for this project. What did you bring me? Well, I love that you chose like the subject of mermaids for the mucha because I feel that hems in so nicely with like, you know, his organic lines and the idea of like asymmetry and nature and everything, which is really beautiful. And I'm very excited to be a novo Nouvelle femme. Okay, what you said? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so these are the pictures I've chosen. Okay. Uh, this one is of me and my koi tail. So it's supposed to be a tribute to my Asian heritage and where I started and where I've come as an Asian mermaid. Okay. That one is of me and my Sirenosome tail. So I love like the positioning of the body and the background I see is really beautiful with the nature and the light streaming through. Mm -hmm. And then this one we have of me underwater. So in the same tale we saw just now, um, I'm in a four meter pool and this is where I sometimes do performances and teach classes. Okay, so I like the three pictures, but, but I have to make some choices. So I think I will incorporate a bit of each picture in the final uh, drawing. I like the pose on this one, especially with the tail coming like that. I like the pattern on the koi uh, tail, which is very nice. And I love the way your hair flows in the water uh, on this one. So, okay, leave it to me and uh, I'll see you when I'm done. Okay, I'm okay. cool. Okay. Thank you, see you soon. So, Let's gather all this, get our watercolor and gouaches and mimic Muka style in seven easy steps. As usual, we will not paint on a white surface and you know why. First of all, we want to give a tonality to the whole picture by transparency and this is even more important with watercolors. Second, we don't want any stark white part playing peekaboo between brush strokes and finally, this will allow us to judge our colors contrast better than on a glaring white background. In this case, I will be using a very diluted burnt sienna and raw sienna mix that will also give a retro feeling to the whole picture uh, as it will make it look like old paper. As mentioned, there are several elements that we want to weave together on this. The mermaid, of course, but also a geometric pattern frame, some elements of flora and fauna, not only in the frame, but also in a kind of background landscape. To keep with the ocean team, I will use seashells, starfishes and algae. I also wanted to incorporate a nice disc with an intricate pattern that would be like a sort of halo for our model. Spoiler alert, my first attempt was a bit too loose and didn't work out in the end. You can't compensate a weak sketch even with an excellent paint job. Let's see what happened.
Once a sketch is done and perfect, we can start indicating shadows and dark areas with a, a nice brown, once again a mix of burnt and raw sienna, until we have like a monochromatic version of our picture, a bit like these old sepia photographs. This will not only be seen by transparency and give a contrast effect, maybe a bit like what we did in the Rembrandt video here, uh, but also it will help mute all colors by unifying them. We can now start with the colors. Remember that we can't really use bright colors, so no lime green or hot pink, please. But this is where the weakness of my first sketch started to show. Not only the poor construction of the first halo was terrible and didn't look good proportionately to the mermaid, there was not enough pattern in my frame, kelp was maybe not the best algae to go with, etc, etc, etc. And my choice of color was terrible too. The green was too bright and didn't match the blue or the purple I used. So, what do you do in that case? You can't fix the unfixable and I had to start from scratch. This time, not only I paid more attention to the sketch and made the frame more geometric, thought out and precise, but I also used a much better palette, orange and browns and a darker green, just a bit of blue for the corners of the frame. Since you have the underpainting, you are not working on the shadows anymore, but on the color of the objects themselves.
gouache is an opaque medium, as opposed to watercolor that has less pigments, and therefore play with the transparency. The idea here is to add details, like light reflections in white, but also any part of the picture that needs a stronger color. The outline is a very important part of Muka's techniques. The major outline is thicker than the internal lines for every part of the picture and help create an effect of depth as they suggest the superposition of different planes. Each element has a thick contour and thinner line inside this contour. Finally, you can add some details here and there to make the decor more ornate. I chose to use a gold ink to add detail and reflections all around the picture. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Of course I There you go. Oh my gosh. Do you like it? I love it. <laughs> okay, cool. You got everything all in one picture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried. It's beautiful. The, the color of the... The koi. Of the koi thing yeah, is a bit different. Yeah, and then you got different. like the hair. Yeah. And you got the pose. Oh, this is so beautiful! <laughs> I've always wanted to be like an art beautiful maiden and you just made my wish come true, so I'm yeah, super yeah. happy! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow! So that's good, that's yours. <laughs> I'm gonna frame this. It's gonna have quite a to my room. No problem. Thank you so much! Okay guys, subscribe, like, share your art on social media with the hashtag NGFCPaint and I'll see you next time. Cheers!